morning guys and welcome to this week's Q&A. Um, before we start, I just want to say thank you so much for your comments and for your emails. We read it all and if you, uh, your answer haven't been here this week, we will, uh, we will put your question next week, so don't worry. And for the new people, there is this subscribe button. Click it and click the little billing thingy because uh, then you will uh, be notified every time we have a new Q&A. So, without further ado, let's first get question. <laughs> Can you tell something about the Matrix? And is reincarnation and the concept of God part of the Matrix? So, it really depends which perception you're looking for. When I look at the matrix, matrix is just a pattern, a pattern uh, created for us to move within. There's a lot of different patterns going on. That means there's a lot of different matrix just going on on top of each other. So when we step out of one matrix, we step right into another. Matrix is just a structure of which we are moving within or without. Uh, people who look from conspiracy <laughs> I know you guys know what I mean. <laughs> they look at the matrix as the control, the part that makes us blinded, following like sheep and not standing up for ourselves and for our prosperity. This is not exactly the full truth. So there is control, there is a lot of different energies going on, and to wake up is to take a step out of this until now created world imagine that you normally can only look from the frog perception and all of a sudden you can learn from a bird perception this is kind of how you can see it so it doesn't make it more or less right it just means that you can see a part of the bigger picture if time doesn't really exist what is the relationship between this moment past and future lives does every decision, emotion, and frequency influence all those lives? Yes and no. <laughs> so, um, time doesn't exist. That means that you can be incarnated now in 2020. I guess it's 2020, yeah. And in your next incarnation, you can choose to incarnate in a timeline beforehand. The thing is that you have to choose a role that doesn't shift the major outcome. That means you cannot go back and be Hitler, for example, because uh, the energetic uh, shift he was a part of created so much change for the world as we know it today. So if you choose to shop in the earlier timelines in your next life, you need to choose a minder role, a role where you're purely there for your own expansion and not to be a part of the collective movement. How can we man maintain or regain our freedom in this time and create a beautiful world? Um, I always really love this saying, and I don't know if it's from inside of me or outside of me, but it's all the same, right? I love the saying of, when you're put in a box, you realize that there is no box. Because the moment that we are, as now, uh, set into these lockdowns and we are taking out of our day-to-day -day normal life, and we're taking out of our matrix routines, to be in that lockdown actually creates space and opportunities for you to open your mind to see different, to see different outcomes, different opportunities in life, different directions, and to look within yourself, to reconsider what do I truly want in my life. So back to the question was, how can I maintain or regain freedom to create a more beautiful world? Yes, so it is really uh, knowing this part within yourself and and ask yourself this question, what gives you a feeling of freedom? What do you wish to bring to the world from where you are? What do you wish to be the example of? We are stepping into a time reality 
where it's no longer about cheating one or another. It's about being the example. So if you want to change the world, then show them how it's done. You speak a lot about the heart, but in Asian martial arts, they say that the power, the chi or the hara is in the belly, the solar plexus chakra. Do you feel it's less important to be centered in the belly than in the heart? This is a great question. <laughs> no, the whole part of you being is equally important. That being said, what they're talking about is you're in the fire. It's your willpower. It's your, uh, the, the power of creation. It is where life force are combined into this human structure. So you can call it the center of all your chakras will be there exactly in the middle, like this yin and yang thing. It is important. It is important for balance. It is important for you if you want to use the elements of the ground, for example, in Susteme or Tai Chi or etc. What you do is you really draw up the energy from the earth and you draw down the energy from the universe and you combine it in the middle of the center and you become that center. That means that you can use the powers of the earth as well as the heaven. And that is why they use it in martial arts. Um, I talk so much of the heart because the heart is connected to your soul. The heart is the direct mirror of your soul. Every question that you may have or want to have answered, the answer will lie within your heart. Once that we become aware of all our chakras and we expand this heart chakra, the heart chakra becomes one chakra. That means that your whole chakra system vibrate and radiate with the energy of your heart. So also your chi center. <laughs> Is the virus in your perception like they want us to believe in the mainstream media? No, it will never be. <laughs> so um, have you ever heard that story of one feather became to five uh, chickens, or five, uh, not the chickens, the bigger ones, ducklings, no, hens. The, 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 the <laughs> geese, the geese. The cook, <laughs> 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 So, one. so the thing is that the mainstream always want to send a certain picture to control our minds in a certain direction. They are, they are trained in these things. They, they know where they want us to go, right? In one form or another. It doesn't mean that all mainstreams are evil because they do wish to share information. But you must realize that the information that they give is also controlled. Uh, so do I believe that the picture was presented in the, in the news are the truth and nothing but the truth? No, I do not. What we need to look into instead of being angry at this outside of ourselves is asking ourselves on a personal level, how honest are we to ourselves and the world around us? How often do we present a picture which is only partly the truth? And how do we wish to navigate differently? So we need to understand the outside world is not against us, but it is a reflection of our inner world. So if we wish to change the outer world, it does not work to fight it. But on the other hand, look inside and ask myself, okay, but what do I stand for? Do I speak the truth of my heart? Is that what I send out? What happens when you fall in love? <laughs> It's a chemical reaction, purely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, love is what the breaks the worlds go around, right? Love is everything that exists. To fall in love means that there is this feeling that overcomes your whole system on such a deep level that you can no longer go back to where you came from. That means falling in love 
it's not necessarily something you do once in life. Some people do it in things, in people, in animals. But falling in love means that there is something pulling you out of where you were in order of getting you to where you're supposed to go. Falling in love means that standing in one ego structure literally needs to fall down in order of becoming aligned with this love that you are searching for. Falling in love is beautiful. And it is also a chemical reaction that you can literally measure in your body. So don't fear falling in love. Don't fear being hurt because the falling in love part, the movement itself, is the meaning of falling in love. It's not necessarily the whole long run package behind it. So you go fall in love over and over and over again. It's part of movement. It's part of flow. It's part of life. Mm. Is it she's <laughs> falling in love behind the camera? <laughs> I'm just definitely falling in love, that's for sure. No doubt. Mm. <laughs> is it unhealthy for the body to take birth control pills? And what is the healthy alternative? <clears throat> so it really depends on perceptions perspective. It is not super damaging as it is just a hormone form that you are put it into your system and the hormones is a hormone that your body knows and therefore can navigate around. But within any balance of a system, when you apply more hormones to do one thing or another, you will create a disbalance. You will create a change. It will affect you in one way or another. I do not use these things myself because for me, um, it is not in alignment with what I feel is pure and natural for my body and my being. A natural way of doing it is simply to get to know your body. When you uh, do this ovulating thingy, the, where you can get pregnant, your body temperature rises. That means, and you send out this different smell, you send out a different kind of reaction because this hormone is triggered within you. So when you get to know yourself, knowing your body, you will literally know when you get pregnant and when you do not. That is the most natural way of dealing with it. I know there are some people who use different herbs and different vegetables. And I even heard that if you drink a lot of ginger tea, it is naturally a birth control. In my perception, this is not exactly um, in my perception, this is not the purest way of doing it because then you still are counting on something outside of yourself to show you what you can just learn to feel within yourself. It is your body. You are one with it. Start talking with yourselves, talking with yourselves and start learning to listen to your body's reactions. I tend to push away people I love. How can I change this? Well, you all do that once in a while. So <laughs> don't worry about it. You need to first accept yourself where you are. Be okay with how you are responding and reacting for this now. Next step is to look into why do I do this? And in which situations do I do it? So the pushing away part, when did it start? And what happens in the moment where I feel the urge to push people away? Is it because I need space or is it because I am afraid of losing? Is it because I'm afraid of being seen? Or is it simply because I need to learn to set my boundaries faster? Pushing people away often is a vibrational mess to the fear of being hurt. So look into that. <laughs> okay guys, this was all for today and um, I hope that you enjoyed it and you got a few answers to the questions that you have asked. 
my mind is a bit blown away today and we never sh make more than one shooting so i am sure that you guys did skin it wrong and pure so here we are <laughs> imperfections make everything very perfectly so once again thank you so much and please leave a comment below so we know how this feels for you guys and if any questions please send us an email and i will see you next week namaste